Hi, I'm Kelly and I draw things and here's what I think some of the best digital art supplies are. So, the big question, number one, digital drawing tablet. So these can be divided into kind of two categories. You have without a screen and with a screen. So first tablets without a screen. Wacom calls them pen tablets. So this is really similar to what I started with. And it plugs into the side of your computer, sits in front of your keyboard, and you use a pen to draw on this plastic tablet while you look at the screen of your computer. And the pen tip moves the cursor around and applies pen pressure and lets you draw. I made art like this using that tool. I used that tool for a very long time when I was starting out and it worked really well for me. Eventually, I did upgrade to a different version and that would be a screen display drawing tablet. Now, I'm gonna talk about three different brands that I have either used or had people close to me use that I think are pretty good. One is a Wacom Cintiq. This was for a long time the industry staple for digital art. They're very expensive, but they will last forever and they are a very high quality product. I've had a Wacom Cintiq 13 HD since 2014 and it still works. It has zero lag, it's great. Now a Cintiq does plug into a computer and it is a second display. So you do need a desktop or a laptop to run it. Wacom does make pen computers, where it's the computer and the touch drawing screen in one machine, but I don't have any experience with those. Option two, a competitor of Cintiq, whom which no one can agree how to pronounce <laughs> online, is Huion. Now, I have personally not owned one of these, but my best friend has had one for a very, very long time, and I have tested it out. She's been using hers since 2017. Now, she started with a smaller one and liked it so much, she then bought a bigger one and upgraded. Now it does have a bit more parallax than Wacom. And parallax is where there's a lot of space between where you're physically putting the pen on the screen and where the mouse appears to be. This can be hard to work with for some artists, but some people get used to it. It just depends on your personal preference. But for the price, it's a really great tool and it's lasted over five years and it's still going. Huyan does make pen computers as well, just like Wacom does. But again, I have not tested this out at all, so I can't speak on it. Option three is the well-known Apple iPad. This is more like a pen computer because it is its own machine and you don't need a laptop or desktop to plug it into. However, you don't get to draw on computer programs, you are drawing on the Apple apps from the App Store. And sometimes these are stripped down to more basic versions. So things I like about the iPad, it is so portable, so user-friendly, and it's multi-use. I use it to draw most of the time, but I can also use it to read on my Kindle app and watch movies on Netflix. So things that are lacking on the iPad, it very quickly is going to become outdated as new versions become available. My Wacom lasted me almost a decade. I don't think an iPad would last a decade even if it tried really, really hard. It doesn't have the full programs. Like I said, you have to use the app. Adobe apps are the stripped down versions of the full programs available on a desktop or a laptop. I do feel like the iPad some people are trying to use to replace a computer, but for me and my freelance work, that is not going to happen. It can't do everything I need it to do, so I do need both my iPad and my laptop. Now, honestly, in my daily life, I got my iPad September 2021, and I have not plugged in my Wacom Cintiq since I got it. But if I could only have a computer and a drawing tablet or an iPad, I would have to choose the computer and drawing tablet combo because the iPad just doesn't do everything that I need it to do as a professional artist and designer. Because while I do use my iPad almost every day to draw, I also use my laptop every day for Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, and Premiere Pro to edit these videos, and the iPad does not have the power or the capacity to do that yet. All right, computers. I know not a lot about computers, but I can tell you about the one I use as a professional artist. So I use a 13 inch MacBook Pro. Everything is standard how it comes, except I did upgrade the RAM from eight gigabytes to 16 gigabytes because that is the minimum recommended RAM you want for when you're running Photoshop, which I use every single day. After doing some research on the new MacBooks, you can actually upgrade it to 24 gigabytes of RAM. And if I was buying a new laptop today, that is what I would do because I want the most RAM possible because I'm running so many big programs at the same time. It's just gonna make everything run smoother and faster. I do actually have the minimum storage, which is 256 gigabytes because it was cheap <laughs> and I was trying to save money 
but I have a subscription to Dropbox that way offsets that that I'll talk about later. So the 13 inch screen is small, yeah. I do wish I had a bigger one when I'm doing things like editing videos and having so many panels open, but it's small, it's light, it was cheaper, and it's easy to use. So the smaller screen doesn't render it unusable, and it was something that I was willing to do a trade off for. So, Mac or PC is the big question. I cannot answer that for you. I am a Mac, and so is a lot of the art and design world, but not all of it. And choosing between the two will come down to your industry. Reaching out to professionals in your industry or professors if you're in art school is going to be your best bet to figure out what's gonna work best for you and your future creative career. All right, so that's all the physical tech. Let's talk about software, programs, things that run on your machines. So, I use Adobe. Every week I use Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, and Premiere Pro. Adobe is the digital design software and it is not going away and it will not be replaced because it is so ingrained in every aspect of the design world, there's no way it could be replaced at this time. Now I use all of these programs for design, not for drawing. For drawing, I actually use Clip Studio Paint. I've tried Procreate, it's not my jam, but I know a lot of people that really like it. I've used Clip Studio Paint since 2016, and it's the exact same program on my computer and on the iPad. Even on the iPad, it has up at the top, like file, edit, layer, it's all there. And Clip Studio Paint has a lot of tools specifically for illustration and comics that go really well with my work. Clip Studio Paint has a lot of tools specifically built for illustration and comics. Some of my favorites are word balloons and paneling tools, stabilization for inking, and really great perspective tools. All right, looping back to Dropbox. Dropbox is something I use every single day. Dropbox is a file storage system where you upload all your files to cloud storage and you can access it from any device. So when I'm working on my computer and I save a file, it'll automatically save to Dropbox and it is safe. So if something happens to my laptop, like it explodes, <laughs> it dies, it's stolen, all of my work can be accessed from another machine and I don't lose anything. Because I know I can go to any computer, log into Dropbox, and access any of the files I've ever made. And it gives me a lot of peace of mind. I know you can back things up with hard drives, but I have had so many issues with hard drives and heard so many stories of they do eventually corrupt and then you lose your stuff and I didn't want to risk that. Because it's way less stressful to just have it automatically happen. And I do believe the yearly fee of Dropbox is worth my peace of mind. Also, when I travel and I'm using my laptop instead of my desktop in my home studio, I can access everything from Dropbox, no matter where I am. Because I have had freelance clients contact me while I'm on the road. They're like, hey, we can't find this file you did for us. Can you send it back to us? And I can just sit there and send it from my iPad instead of going, oh, I'm not home for five days. I'll send it to you then when they need it, like right then and there for printing. Or I'm at a comic convention as an artist and I'm talking to someone about a piece I did, I can just open up my phone and pull it up and show them it right then and there instead of being like, oh, it's on my computer, I can show it to you later. It's just so easy to access everything at all times. So I can access every file I've ever made at any given time on my iPhone, iPad, laptop, or desktop. And I recommend Dropbox so much, it is so great. So that's all the tech stuff. Let's talk about non-tech stuff. So this is a laptop stand. I got it off Amazon, it's super cheap. It's not fancy, it doesn't go up and down. It just, you put it together and it stays. I use it to hold my iPad while I draw and it saves my back. So if you have ever had back pain, neck pain, shoulder pain, any sort of pain in that area after you're drawing or while you're drawing, it's probably because you're hunched over your drawing or sitting like a pretzel when sitting up straighter is really going to save you that discomfort. I also recommend having a drawing glove, also known as a smudge guard. I use this all the time with my Wacom Cintiq and it kept me from grinding oil into the screen for years and years. And it's kind of like a uniform. You put it on, you get in the mental zone that it is time to create. I do use it sometimes with my iPad, especially when my iPad screen starts heating up from extended use. My hand, instead of gliding over it smoothly, will start to stick to it a little bit and that makes it hard to draw. But I put the glove on and there's that barrier of fabric between my skin and the glass and it keeps my hand gliding smoothly as I pull lines. I also recommend specifically an iPad case that lets you work elevated even without the laptop stand. This is the one I have. I really, really like it. 
The only thing is sometimes I wish I had a little bit more protection to my pen where maybe it went in from the top of the case instead of on the side because I have thrown it in my backpack and like three times I pull it out the Apple Pencil isn't there and I look down and it's in my backpack. So I wish that was a little more protected. But other than that, I absolutely love this case. This is an older version, so for the newer iPad, it may have already fixed that problem. If you have anything you want to add to this list, leave a comment with what you use and why you love it. I'm always looking for new stuff. And those are the best digital art supplies that I use. If you like this video, you also might like this video about common artist fears and ways I overcame them. Thanks for watching. I'm Kelly and I draw things. Have a good day. Bye.